so today's video is about constant mental prayer because this video is a part of a collaboration started by Michelle from the channel A Common Life and everyone a part of this collaboration is talking about a virtue of Mary, the 10 virtues of Mary. It's the month of May and traditionally Catholics honor Mary throughout the month of May. And we do not worship Mary, but we honor Mary as God honored Mary and continues to honor Mary in many ways. And just quickly, we know Mary lived this virtuous life because Mary was conceived without sin. Mary was conceived in her mother's womb without sin, which is what Catholics call the Immaculate Conception. We know from Luke chapter 1 verse 28 that Mary is full of grace and if to be full of God's grace means that you can't have sin because sin is what separates us from God and his grace. So we know that Mary lived this virtuous, sinless life and she perfectly follows God's will. She's our spiritual mother and she intercedes for us, meaning she prays for us. And we know her prayers are powerful. We know that Jesus performed his first public miracle, the wedding at Cana, at her request. So Mary deserves our respect and honor. So again, May is the month of Mary. I know I'm starting the month off with a rosary from a woman in my women's group who unfortunately lost someone very close to her, but I'm joining her for that rosary and the May crowning at my parish. We will be singing some Marian hymns and I'm happy to lead those hymns for my parish. So this video is about constant mental prayer and quick reminder after you watch my video, make sure to check out all the other women in this collaboration linked below. So we know from 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 17, that St. Paul tells us that we must pray constantly. This can be daunting. We have so much to do. How are we supposed to pray constantly? So let's remember Romans chapter 8, verse 26, that we do not know how to pray as we ought, but the Spirit of God intercedes for us with sighs too deep for words. So God knows that we're not the greatest at prayer and we're continuing to grow and improve, but all we have to do is say quick little prayers throughout the day, come Holy Spirit, and the Holy Spirit will help us to pray. And we know Mary lived a virtuous, sinless life, so she definitely had this virtue of constant mental prayer. And we also know this from Luke. In Luke chapter 2, we know that Mary kept all these things, reflecting on them in her heart. I especially like Luke chapter 2 verse 51, especially for the mothers. His mother kept all these things in her heart. And that verse is from when Mary and Joseph lost Jesus. They couldn't find him for three days. They found him in the temple and they expressed their fear and worry and they asked, why did you do this to us, Jesus? And Jesus said, don't you know that I need to be in my father's house? And Mary and Joseph didn't understand, but Mary was patient and she kept this in her heart. And we have similar experiences in this life. Sometimes we are given such trials, such sufferings, and we don't understand why, God, why are you not taking this suffering away from me? We can talk about redemptive suffering in another video, but Mary is such a good example for us. We need to ponder these things in our heart and just give it up to God. We don't understand all of God's ways. And when we are given these sufferings, we can just ask for God's peace, for his comfort, and for his help. Lord, help me through this suffering that I have in my life, even though I don't understand, just as Mary didn't understand in Luke chapter 2. So again, with this idea of just small little prayers throughout the day, I love 
when I am feeling stressed, I just give it to God and I say, Lord, help me through this. Help me to feel your peace. Help me to get through this. And also when I'm out in nature or I see something beautiful, I just say a quick thank you, God. So God is always being thanked and called out to every day throughout my everyday life. And also I love having religious photos, religious art in my home, because when I see a photo of Jesus, I cannot walk by and not say, thank you, Jesus. Thank you for your gift of salvation. Thank you for your unconditional love that I cannot even comprehend. So I highly recommend having religious art in your home. Also, whenever you're in a situation where you have to wait in line, you're waiting at the airport, something like that, I love being Catholic because I do not have to stress out about wasting time. I never waste time if I give it to God. I can say an Our Father, a Hail Mary, or I can just say, come Holy Spirit, help me with the virtue of patience as I wait in this line. So I love those little ways to keep God in my heart and my mind throughout the day, but I especially love my morning offering. I have a morning and evening prayer at my bathroom sink where I brush my teeth, and I think it's so important to offer your entire day to God every day, every morning, so that our entire lives become a prayer to God. Everything we do is for God. And if you are in a rush, just a simple prayer of, Lord, I love you with all my heart. I offer you my actions of this day. Help me to do your will today and not my will. Just a simple prayer like that can change your day and set your day right because you will be doing God's will and not your own will. I love the morning offering because our whole lives should be a prayer to God, but that doesn't mean that I don't think that scheduled prayer time is not important. It's so important. We should be praying the Divine Mercy Chaplet, the Rosary, and just spontaneous talking to God, you know, in the morning or the evening or when you're walking your dog, whatever works for you. Those spoken prayers, the Our Father, the Hail Mary, those are so important. So definitely get those into your day as well. And in addition to the morning offering and the spoken prayers, staying away from sin is so important, obviously, as well. If we stay away from sin, we can cling closer to God and our lives can truly be a prayer and a gift to God. I also found this great article about constant mental prayer and I have it linked below and my favorite part of it was Father Jacques Philippe and he describes mental prayer as interior prayer, an interior attitude of desire and confidence in God and the humility to accept our poverty before God and wait for him in all things. I really love that, waiting for God in all things. So with our sufferings, we can accept the mystery of these sufferings with patience and ask God for help, ask God for guidance through our sufferings and through our joys. Thank God for all of our joys. And Father Jacques Philippe continued with, we should always strive for love, friendship, and devotion to God as we go about our daily activities. I've also heard the analogy of a child who wants to be close to their parent. They may not be verbally communicating with their parent 24-7, but they may do chores near their parent because they want that closeness in the relationship. And that is a mirror to our relationship with God. We're not 24-7 talking to God and praying rosaries and our fathers because we do have to work and provide for our families and ourselves and do our daily chores and activities of the day. But we can keep God in our presence and offer all of those daily activities 
to God. We know from the great saints that anything can be a prayer if offered to God. St. Martin de Porres, for example. I love St. Martin. I hope you enjoyed this video on constant mental prayer and just another reminder that this video is part of the 10 Virtues of Mary collaboration. So make sure to check out all the other women in this collaboration linked below. And a big thank you to Michelle from A Common Life for starting this collaboration. I hope you're enjoying this beautiful Easter season. God bless you. Bye.